Everybody get up, it's time to slam now. What's up, everybody? I am Brad, and today we've got our second installment all about Slam Magazine. I posted a video recently talking about some of the history and some of the unique differences about Slam Magazine as compared to Sports Illustrated and some of the other publications. Today, I thought it would be cool if I shared with you some of the most notable Slam covers. We're going to go through, we're going to look at a handful of the, uh, the best Slam covers going all the way back to their inception in 1994. And uh, so, yeah, let's jump in and take a look. All right. So first up, here's one that we already talked about. This is the very first issue from Slam Magazine. This is from 1994. Larry Johnson throwing it down with the Charlotte Hornets. Um, not a Hall of Famer, but very relevant player back in the early to mid 90s, both on the college scene and in the NBA. He won the Rookie of the Year with the Charlotte Hornets and a very cool cover coming right out of the gate, showing you what Slam Magazine is all about in your face. Just, uh, you know, s slam dunks and hip hop and uh, just kind of a lot of attitude and uh, very cool cover. So something interesting to note here is Slam Magazine in their early days, you know, as they were kind of trying to become an up and coming publication, they didn't have a lot of money. They uh, weren't able to, like, get the athletes out to do their own photo shoots yet. Like, athletes I don't even think were interested. And so they had to pay the NBA to use, to use licensed photos for their covers. And so that's why the first handful of slam covers, which we're going to take a look at, all are actually in-game action photos, which a lot of people prefer anyway. But Slam did go on to be known for some of their really cool, uh, you know, like custom photography that they put on their covers. So anyway, first issue right here. Second issue, this is from 1994 also, and this is Sean Kemp. So this is a really awesome one. Uh, Sean Kemp, uh, I can't remember if he was on a Sports Illustrated cover, but if he was, it wasn't really a very significant one. But this one's very cool because this just kind of like um, exemplifies what Sean Kemp was. You know, the dude could could really fly and could really throw it down. Um, he's got that one really famous dunk. I can't remember who it was over where he just absolutely posterizes somebody and then just is like <laughs> pointing at them in their face uh, as he's backing up like one of the most disrespectful dunks of all time. But uh, really cool here. So these these first few issues of Slam in uh, newsstand uh, in good condition, really tough to find. Next up, this is the third issue. This is from 1995, and this is Shaq. So obviously Shaq's first Slam cover, still with the Orlando Magic. Um, love this shot here of uh, a pretty early Shaq. Fourth issue, John Starks. How about that? Um, John Starks, somewhat of a forgotten player today, but a very, very key member of those New York Knicks teams that uh, often challenged the Bulls in the 90s, but of course came up short every time. And um, yeah, just uh, once again, a really cool photo. This looks like it may have been the first time that uh, that Slam was able to use their own photography rather than paying for a licensed in-game image. So next, we're going to look at the sixth issue, and this is from 1995. This is Michael Jordan's first Slam cover. So I'm going to be honest, I don't love this cover. Um, I think it's kind of disappointing that this is the cover image of the first time that Michael was on Slam. I would much rather see him uh, soaring through the sky, throwing it down, you know, shooting a, a fadeaway jumper um, rather than just an up-close shot of his face screaming. Kind of an odd cover to me, but it is Michael Jordan, and it is the first time that he appeared on the cover of Slam magazine. Next up, we're going to look at issue number nine. I've talked about this one before. This is Allen Iverson's first slam cover. And actually, there's there's tons of significance to this cover. So you can see he's still in college here in his Georgetown jersey. And uh, so it's the first Iverson cover. It was the very first time that slam put a college athlete on the cover. Um, it's actually a, a regional variant because there were two covers that week. Iverson was on the wet. Uh, I'm sorry, on the East Coast. And then on the West Coast, they had, I believe, Ed O'Bannon with UCLA. 
And um, this cover right here of, of AI, it also precedes his first Sports Illustrated cover. So to me, this is uh, one of the coolest Allen Iverson um, magazine covers that you can have. Next up, this is issue number 15. This is from 1997, and it was the 96 draft class. So a lot of great players in this draft class. You can see guys on there like Ray Allen. You got Stephon Marbury, Marcus Camby. Uh, who else you got? Sharif Abdul-Rahim, Steve Nash. I believe Antoine Walker's on there. Of course, notably missing is Allen Iverson. He was not able to be there that day. I read a story about that. But the key here is Kobe Bryant. Um, obviously, Kobe being on this issue, this is his first appearance. So that makes this a super collectible and a very iconic slam cover. Next up, issue number 20 was Scottie Pippen's first slam cover. Um, really cool image here. Love the red and black. Bow down behind the scenes with the world champion Bulls. And what's kind of sad is Scottie Pippen never had his own Sports Illustrated cover while with the Bulls. He did appear on a couple, but uh, like one was in the background with Michael. I think another one he shared with Michael and Phil Jackson. And then he actually did have his own Sports Illustrated cover um, when he was playing with the Houston Rockets, but he never had one with the Bulls. So this to me is a really, really awesome cover and the fact that it's it's uh, spotlighting Scotty with his Bulls uniform. Next up, issue number 21, Stefan Marbury and Kevin Garnett from 1997. This is the first cover KG appeared on with Slam Magazine. And this is an iconic cover too, just because uh, once again, it really captures what Slam was all about. You've just kind of got that hip hop influence and in, in the pop culture here. Um, KG and Starberry, didn't end up panning out to be a real successful duo, but uh, they were two just really, uh, I mean, kind of cool cats. I mean, the dudes could really ball, um, and uh, this is just a really cool image here of, of them together on the cover, Showbiz and KG. Next up, issue number 24 from 1998, Kobe Bryant. This is his first solo cover. This is by far my favorite Kobe Bryant slam issue. Uh, the other one we looked at, obviously, he's sharing the cover with lots of other guys from that 96 draft class, but this is all Kobe. It says Kobe can't be stopped. This was uh, two years before he won his first title and just absolutely love this cover. Next, Gary Payton, issue number 26 from 1998, and uh, the cover says Master P. Gary Payton makes him say, Ugh. So it's kind of a play on words because Master P was a rapper and he had a hit song called Make Him Say Uh. Um, and actually, Master P played briefly in the NBA, I believe, with the Toronto Raptors. And uh, his son is Lil Romeo, um, who kind of, you know, was a somewhat successful rapper as well. And this I just think this is a really cool cover. Love the love the Gary Payton image. Love the play on words. And um, yeah, first time Gary Payton appeared on Slam Magazine. Here is probably the most iconic slam issue. Uh, I've talked about this one in my in my videos before, too. I have a copy of this one graded, and uh, it's the Allen Iverson Soul on Ice from 1999. We've got, uh, you know, traditionally at that time, he was wearing, he was rocking the cornrows, but here he's got that afro picked out and got the old school Philadelphia jersey on. He's wearing the gold chain. He's got the ABA basketball uh, got the watch, just everything about this issue is very cool. Next, Tracy McGrady, number 46. This is from 2000. You got him there with the Orlando Magic. Tracy McGrady, moment of truth. Absolutely love this cover. I think this is kind of underrated because, believe it or not, Tracy McGrady never appeared on a Sports Illustrated cover. He did appear on an SI China but uh, the the weekly issues in the United States, he never had a cover. Uh, he's a Hall of Famer, and he was like an MVP level player there for a while. And uh, I especially remember when he was with the Magic. Uh, I had the T Max shoes, and he could like he could fly higher than anybody at that time. He was one of the best dunkers. I think he averaged like thirty five points a game one year with the Magic. He was 
unbelievable. Um, also, I apologize for the the typo there. I see I misspelled his last name, left out the A. But this is very cool because, uh, like I said, no Sports Illustrated cover. So if you're a big Tracy McGrady fan, this is the cover for you to have. Next up, 2002, this is LeBron James' first slam cover. So obviously that carries with it major, major significance. Now he does share the cover with Sebastian Telfair, who was another uh, player drafted straight out of high school. Uh, I think he went to the Portland Trailblazers, Trailblazers, if I remember correctly. He was like a real small point guard. I believe he was under six foot. Uh, and he just didn't really pan out, didn't didn't end up having a lot of NBA success like obviously LeBron has. So major collectible issue here with it being LeBron's first slam cover. Next, we got another Kobe um, awesome cover, uh, issue number 66 from 2002. So they had won three titles and you've got his three championship trophies there in front. And I love the color match with the yellow background. I love the, the black jersey. You know, Kobe just standing there looking like a boss with his arms crossed, winning is everything. Uh, anything Kobe is collectible, but this is just to me an especially aesthetic cover. Next from 2003, issue number 71. This is the first time LeBron appeared solo on the cover of Slam. So I think this has major collectability. Um, he's wearing just like an NBA All Star jersey. I think this may have been before he was even drafted. So not even sure if we knew yet that he was going to the um, going to the Cavaliers. But um, yeah, obviously very young LeBron there and first time he's on the cover by himself. Next up from 2005, this was issue number 87. It's Ray Allen. And I love this one just because um, it's Ray Allen in that old school in the Supersonics jersey. You know, obviously the Supersonics no longer exist, uh, but super cool team, super cool jerseys. And Ray Allen was on a slam cover previously with that 96 draft class. He also was on a Sports Illustrated, but shared the cover. Um, I think he might have been on two covers and shared at both times. So this is the one time you've got just Ray Allen. And I think it makes it even cooler that he's with the Supersonics. Next up, issue number 93 from 2005, LeBron. Um this is just a really cool cover. You've got LeBron on uh, the King of Diamonds card there. Uh, LeBron, here comes the rain. He's got the crown. He's got the sword. And just I, I think there's a really cool cover concept here. And, you know, we know LeBron is one of the most collectible athletes. And here he is again, 2007, issue number 106. And this, to me, is just another really, really cool cover. You can see how Slam has had some awesome looking covers over the years, kind of doing a play on the NBA logo, you know, like uh, his own version of the Jerry West logo. It says Slam the Remix. Ron is the one. Next up, we've got Kevin Garnett is super bad. This is from 2007. And once again, I just love the aesthetics. I love the green color back, uh, the color match background. I love that font, that yellow font just looks really cool. Uh, it also makes me think of the movie Super Bad, which I'm pretty sure came around, came out right around that time, 2007. And uh, just a, just another example of a really cool slam cover. Next up from 2009, LeBron and Kobe uh, says LeBron versus Kobe. Let's get it on. So we know that Kobe and LeBron somehow never faced each other in the NBA finals. Uh, Kobe won five and I believe played in what? Seven, seven NBA finals. LeBron has won four and he's played in, oh gosh, I don't know, maybe 10 NBA finals. And yet they never met. They just always missed each other. Um, and so I think that's that's what's cool here. This was around that time where a lot of people were debating who's the best player in the word, world, Kobe Bryant or LeBron James. And so to have them kind of head to head sharing a cover together, I think is pretty neat. All right. This one's very unique here. 2010, LeBron James wearing a New York Knicks jersey. So LeBron James never played for the New York Knicks, but this was right before uh, the decision, you know, the, the controversial decision that I'm sure LeBron wishes he could take back now because that 
did not win him very much positive publicity at the time when he announced that he was going to take his talents to South Beach and team up with Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh uh, in Miami. So this cover was obviously before that, whenever Slam and the whole world really was speculating where LeBron James was going to play next. So uh, I just think this is really cool, especially if you're a Knicks fan. Uh, imagine what your fandom and your franchise could have been like if you had signed LeBron James. And last up here, this is from 2013, Steph Curry. And this is the first appearance for Steph Curry on the cover of Slam. One of the most collectible basketball athletes that there is. And so with this being his first Slam cover, I think this is an underrated collectible. And if you find one of these in good shape, definitely recommend picking it up. All right, that's it. Hope you enjoyed those notable Slam covers. Please like, please comment, please subscribe, and until the next video, see you next time.